Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How's everybody doing? Rocking and rolling in a free world. Here we go, here we go. 17th of December, 2017. No trade calls and recommendations. Everybody just wants for their own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only as we head into this uh, last uh, trading week before we have uh, the Christmas break, but then there's still some uh, some extra days before we, we finish off the year. So in terms of the data front, I mean, this week, it'll likely be mostly about what's coming out of Washington, right? If they finally pass the the tax bill, if it's going to get signed, et cetera, et cetera, if we continue to price that in. I mean, on the data front, we have we do have some data out of Australia, out of uh, out of the UK, the usual uh, stuff out of the US. We do have BOJ meeting, but nobody's planning anything too extraordinary. So, you know, really, it's going to be down to how the market starts to position itself into the end of the year and any flows that we may see on what comes out of Washington, right? So just going through some of these charts, uh, crude, what's happening on crude? Not an awful lot, we're still stuck. As we said, as far as we're concerned, um, a lot of chop around here, this 200 week on the weekly, right? Uh, we feel the 60 is a strong resistance to the upside and 55s are still attracting to the downside. So it's a tricky one because you could it's still closing below this 200. You could argue that it looks like it's trying to coil for a test higher. But if you go back on the daily, um, you see there's still a, quite a lot of, uh, of wheeling and dealing. I think you can make the case for this breaking up to the upside or the downside. Um, we still think even if we're going to end up uh, to the upside, it makes a lot more sense for this to, to come back into the 55 mark before going back higher. But our base case hasn't changed. As long as we hold these highs and as long as the 60s are being protected, our base case is still that we're coming back into the 55 mark. Now, in terms of the uh, DXY, what's happening on the on the DXY? Well, if you look at it on the weekly, this is another one, and you'll see this uh, recurring theme across the board that we're stuck around the 200 week on most charts. And you see here, we're stuck looking for direction. We're kind of stuck in this 95s, 9450s, 95s to the upside, uh, 9190s, 92s to the downside. So market is really looking for the next move and uh, i think these market um this kind of action is tricky because it, it tends to favor uh your bias right if you want if you're bullish you're going to see this bullish if you're bearish you've got a case to look at this as bearish so i think ultimately there's just an awful lot of chop and we have to see how the follow-through continues but right here clearly to the upside there'll be a lot of resistance coming in right with those two moving averages coming in and to the downside you still have support and it's still trying to base here if you go on something like the daily you see that the chop is uh, is fairly apparent and as we know you know when you see market stuck inside this 200 and the 100 or the, you know it really means that it's still it's in some kind of consolidating pattern and it really needs to find direction but most likely it won't find direction until it unless it finds momo outside this chop zone so you just have to be very 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 patient i think the key test here the way this closed last week it looks like it wants to try and take a stab at these 9440s so the big question on the week is going to be how we hold around the 95 mark right as this moving averages comes back so if we close above then you might expect an end of the year uh rally into that last week of the year rip higher if it can't then probably more downside so again it is what it is i wish it was clear i wish it was an easier cleaner trade unfortunately it's not you know as always we have to um, play the hand we're dealt not the hand we would like if you look at gold this is a fairly classical trade for us um, if you look at the recent years you, know, you see that uh, we tend to base right into the uh, fomc um, last FOMC meeting and then we kind of rally out of that into January as the January seasonality picks up so fairly uh, uh, classical action on gold uh, you see very similar also last year right then rally through into January so the big question is is that going to hold through I mean so far we've had good trades now it's just a question if the runners are going to have some legs continue to look at it in terms of that 1250 and 1300 it's still stuck inside this range right if we get Momo to the downside then we'd consider you know 
us moving back down towards the 1200 as long as we don't 1300s attract above 1350s if you look at this on the weekly uh, you can see that you've got a nice little coil action in the sense that you've got this 50 this 100 and the 200 and you see how we closed so especially if it can close another positive week and we close back above that 50 and that 100 well that's going to add a lot more uh, uh, fuel to the fire for a move back into 1300 so it's another key week so the focus is really to the upside last week's highs and to the downside last week's lows why because oops that's not what I wanted to do um, hold on because right if we close above last week's highs then essentially we're back closing another weekly close above the 50 and the 100 week right and if we get traction below last week's lows then you're probably going to get a close below the 200 week moving average so this week is inside would be just you know much to do about nothing we still have to wait outside this range very very telling and likely set up the next uh the next move or at least tradable move in terms of the es what's going on in the es so we talked about this um let's see if it loads uh, I'd have to click on it. We talked about this range here and we said if we hold above, then the round numbers will attract. That 2700 is going to attract. Back below, we could get a decent correction. Right now, we're kind of stuck now. 26 to the downs, 2600 to the downside, 2700 to the upside as we had that. Um, keep on pricing in this tax cut. And again, that grind higher as all the wheeling and dealing was done into quadruple witching. So the big thing here is how we open and how we sustain this week. Now, again, can't stress this enough. As long as we hold above these highs, there is very little reason for this to not continue to try and grind higher and move back towards that and try and take out the next round number just for, for the hell of it. And if we trade back inside this range, then we would not be surprised to see a very quick move back into the 2600s. That's pretty much where we where we are, right? In terms of some of the uh, currency pairs we, we discussed last week, you know, a lot of key interesting zones, right? We talked about the um, the Aussie and the fact that uh, we felt the 77s attracted and you see the sellers are still coming in here so this is really key zone for the week if they can't close them back above the 77 then it's going to start to look like it wants to try and take out all these lows and continue this downtrend if they can close it above the 77s we'd expect a lot of covering to come in in that 200 weekly to get tested quick again needs to get back above the 8188 but you know could be a lot of uh, of action around this level so that's quite interesting we talked about the fact that the asymmetric risk on euro jpy uh, was to the downside um, last week going into last week got a very very nice uh, little move right off the beginning of the week so this is a very interesting zone right we've been stuck inside this range for a long time 13450 133 13150 so as long as we're stuck inside this range much to do about nothing but heads up at these lows right because if we close below the 13150 we would not be surprised to see um, 200, 200, and uh, you know, good 200, uh, 300 pips to the downside as we try and come back into this 200 on the uh, on the daily. As long as it can, then don't be surprised to see this continue to bounce and continue to be stuck inside this range. And again, the range is 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 true for euro too, right? A lot of people are getting excited towards the back end of the week, but if you look at all our other videos, we're still comfortably stuck in this range. So. Uh, much to do about nothing as far as we're concerned. I'm not going to go through that whole discussion as we had that uh, last week. Cable, we didn't look at cable last week, I forgot. Basically, the um, uh, the longs do not want to see it getting comfortable below the 132.50. This is a really important zone. You could go back and look at it on the weekly too, right? And you see how important this whole area is as we're stuck so it tried to rally back upside and you had this whole upside channel action going on and what's happened right now recently well this is what's happening right so as long as it can try and base around this 132.50 it could still try 
and pop, especially on a headline. This is a tricky one because it's all headline driven. But technically, if we close back below that 132.50, then this could start to get quite ugly for a move back into 128, 126s. So very, very uh, 120, 132.50, extremely important uh, level to keep an eye out for going into this week. Then Kiwi, we also discussed the fact that that uh, 60, eight level was holding like a champ and even though it um it you know the more it gets tested the weaker it becomes we said you know as long as it holds it holds so you can't get stuck trying to short until you get a daily close below that 168 and you see it keeps on bouncing stubbornly keeps on bouncing so that was where the asymmetric opportunities were last week but we're still stuck not much has changed and essentially we've been stuck inside this range you know for a very very long time over a year so we'll have to see how that uh, resolves in terms of CAD this is a particularly interesting zone uh, very very interesting level 128 it's been pivotal for years right a lot uh, a, lo a lot of interesting action around here so if it can break these highs you would expect to see an awful lot of covering because there's been a lot of selling coming in here looking for this to hold right and you see how it's still coiling trying to press back into it so this is an interesting one so if we take out those highs so pretty much um, the 129.00 do not be surprised to see a very very quick move into the 130 but we would be cautious on getting aggressively long unless we close a day or the week above the 130, okay? Still, above the 129, those 100 pips could come quick, but we still think the 130 is a key pivotal bull bear line. You know, if we, if we take out these lows, then we would expect 125s to come out very, very quickly. And last but not least, again, as we said, yen, it's all about that 112 level. And you see, essentially, we're still stuck there. Nothing much has moved. We really have to see some kind of resolution. As we said, a lot of those weeklies are stuck around the 200. So it's really not, um, not that surprising. Okay, so let's see what happens. Let's see what we get this week. It's, it's a full week's trading, so it should be interesting. Uh, I'll be around. Um, wishing everybody an awesome rest of the day, uh, rest of the weekend, wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, and a super week ahead. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. As always, very much appreciated. And um, let's get ready. Take care, guys. I'll post a recording on Twitter.